Now in this section we are going to continue with the default routing what uh, what we have discussed in the previous example if you remember in the previous video we have seen default routing can be used in two locations two scenarios either if you want to route any packet to internet or or even at the end locations now in this lab uh, what you are going to do is we are going to assume that this is my uh, end location the router 1 is my end location and if you if you verify from the router 1 to reach 192.162.2 network i have to go via 10.002 and similar way, if I want to go to 192.163.0 network, I have to go via 10.002. And even if I want to go to 11.0 network, I should go via 10.002. Now here if you see, the common next hop is the same. Now either I can write three static routes, like we did in our previous example. If you remember, we can write three static routes or, or I can write one single default route. Because anyway, wherever you want to go, you have to go via common one direction only. And this is the exit router which is having only one direction so i can use default route so that's what i'm doing here on the router one i'm going to use default routing and the same thing i'm going to do the on the router three as well as well as on the router three so why because here even in the router three also to reach 182.168.2. network the common next stop is 11.001 and to reach 182.168.1. network the common next stop is uh, 11.001 and similar way to reach uh, 10.0 network the common next stop is 11.001 so to reach all the destinations the common next stop is 11.001 so which means on the router 1 and router 3 instead of using three static routes I'm going to use uh, one default route okay so that's that's how we are going to verify but on the router 2 we are going to use static routing because uh, for to reach this network you have to go via 10.001 and from the router 2 to reach this network you have to go via 11.002 that's the next stop so so that's the reason i'm going to use static routing on this scenario now you can assume that these two are the end locations with a common next stop and then the router which is in the middle which is having multiple destinations we use static routing so you can assume either in that scenarios or in the real scenarios also probably if you are routing any packet to the internet your router will be connecting to ISP router and this is my ISP router here and from our router we always configure a default routing so you always say default route we say 0000 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 the next stop address whatever the IP address of the router on the ISP <coughs> and from the ISP router to our network so ISP will always configure a static routing and that too for the static routing if I'm using 192.168.1.0 network in the LAN and that is my private network you will not have a static route for the private network but you will have a static route for for the public network whatever we are using because in the real production networks you will have a private IP in the LAN and these private IPs are not recognized by the ISPs so generally what we do we have a NAT on this router network address translation uh, more on this net we have a separate session dedicated on this and we are going to translate this private IP with some public IP let's say I'm translating with 5111 some public IP and we are going to write a static route for the public IP and which means this ISP is going to identify your network with this public IP on the internet so that's how it's going to be in the production networks so but here we are not using NAT here uh, we are not using NAT any kind of NAT and we are not using any public IPs here so we are just having a static route from here to here because we are not connecting to a real internet also here but this is the typical uh, real production network scenario now you can assume the same scenario like that you can assume this is my ISP and from the ISP we are going to configure a static route we are going to configure a static route for the customer and assume that this is my customer having a default route towards ISP is another customer having a default route towards ISP now we can assume like that but at the end we are not using any real internet or we are not connecting uh, any real internet connections here but we'll verify how the default routes are going to behave once we do the configuration now on the router one the prerequisite for this lab is you need to have some IP addresses pre-configured in the lab just like uh, we did in our basic scenarios and I don't have any of the routing here. I just have 
uh, the basic IP addressing and all the interfaces are up and up. So we're not going to use static routing in this scenario here. Instead of using static routing, we are going to use default routing or the end locations that is on the router one and router three. So let's go to router one. Now to configure default route, we need to say IP route. Uh, instead of writing a destination prefix, we just need to say 0 .0 four zeros, and then the subnet mask also four zeros. It can be any subnet mask. And then we are going to write the next hop IP address. So in my scenario, the next hop IP address will be 10.0.0.2. So 10.0.0.2. Now once you add this statement, if you verify the routing table, you should see one entry will be added in your routing table here. That is a static default route. You'll see something called S star, S asterisk. And then this 0, 0, 0 represents, it can be any destination and it can be any submit mask. Uh, anything unknown packet will be simply send it to 10.002. That's what it is going to say. Let's do the same thing on the router 3 also because instead of using static routing on the router 3, I'm going to use default routing. So IP route, destination network ID. So you see the diagram on the left side, destination network ID is 0000 and whatever be the submit mask, and the next hop address is 11.0.0.1 That's the next hop. And if I give show IP route, you can see S asterisk. And to reach any destination, it's going to be it's going via 11.0.0.1. Now on the router 2, we are going to configure a static routing on the router 2. Because we got we don't have a single route, we have multiple routes. So I'm going to verify show IP route. And then on the router 2, I'm going to say IP route. If any packet is distinct for 192.168.1.network, 255.255.255.0, network, the packet should send to 10.001. That is uh, router 1 from the router 2 to reach 1.network. The next top address is 10.001. And then uh, if any packet is distinct for 192.168.3.network, network, I'm saying that it should be sent it to it should be sent to 11.002 that's the next hop so mostly if i assume this is my isp router if i assume it's an isp router uh, then you have a static route for the public ip address whatever you are using we don't have a static route for the private ip so here i'm doing it because uh, we're not using a real kind of setup you have a static route for the public ip and this router will be doing that network address translation which is translating your one dot network to some 50 dot network and you have a static route for the 50 dot network. So more on this, we'll be getting into that in our NAT session separately. So we'll come back to this kind of implementation in our NAT labs also. So let's verify now. So the verification point of view, uh, the basic thing is I should be able to access 1.1 .1 from 1 dot network. I should be able to communicate with 192.168.2 dot network. And also I should be able to communicate from 1 dot network to 3 dot network. And also I should be able to communicate with one and two and three network. So all the three LANs should be able to communicate with each other. So let's go to any one of the PC here, 1.1 1 .1, uh, on the first network. And to verify the IP address, we can use IP config. And then I'm going to use 192.168.2.1. I'm trying to ping from 1.1 1 .1 to 2.1, 192.168. To I should see the reply. And even if I try to ping to 192.163.1, that is from 1 dot network to 3 dot network, I should be able to ping. Now here, this router says any packet is destined, I'll send it to router 2, and the router 2 send it to router 3, and router 3 send it back into the LAN interface, more like a normal routing. If you want, you can try trace 192.168.3.1, your packet destined for 3.1 will go to 1.100, that is router 1, and then goes to router 2 and then goes to router 3 and then finally reaches router uh, what 3.1 computer so even if i try to trace some address which is not present in my network if i try to trace now your trace will go to this one because the source address is 1.1 and the destination address is 172.16.1.1 which is on a different network and the pc says you belong to a different network please go to the router and the router says 
I don't know where is 172 to 60 network, but at the same time, I know that I have a default root 0000. It is going to simply forward it to router 2, that is to your ISP router in a normal cases. And this ISP router is going to see the route. Normally, in the production networks, ISP knows where exactly this uh, public network it is. But in this scenario, it's, it's going to get dropped here because it is not your real internet connections. Okay, so that's how the default routing is going to work. And for verification, we can use a similar kind of topology with three routers uh, and we can practically verify this. So you got the same labs, similar labs, exact same IP addressing with the same configurations and also the exact show commands and the trace commands, whatever I have used here, the same commands are documented in the same in the workbook as well.